Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at and testing out the all-new official Raspberry Pi 4 case fan from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Now this was recently announced and released. It cost $5 and basically what we have here is a fan and a mounting system that fits perfectly in the official Raspberry Pi 4 case. And I'm actually a big fan of this little case, but the Pi does get pretty hot inside of here because there's basically no ventilation whatsoever. And the Raspberry Pi 4 will throttle inside of this case even at the stock clocks of 1.5 gig. Gigahertz. And if you wanted to overclock in something like this, you might as well take the top off of it and point a fan directly on the CPU or cut a hole in the top and mount a fan. But with this new Raspberry Pi fan, I'm pretty sure that the stock clocks will be good to go, but I'm also going to be testing this overclock to 2.1 gigahertz. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box. We're going to do a quick assembly and then we'll get right into some testing. Now when it comes to cooling fans for the Raspberry Pi 4, they're a dime a dozen on Amazon or eBay. You can get the 5 volt ones or the 3.3 volt ones, and then you're left to decide how to mount it up. But with the official Raspberry Pi case fan, it does come with this mounting system that sits directly inside of the Raspberry Pi 4 case, and we also get this small aluminum heatsink here. Now with the other fans, most of them are just two wire jobs, it's either on or off, but with this one here, it's using a three wire setup, and from within software in Raspberry Pi OS, the latest versions, you can go into the performance settings and set this up to come on at 60 degrees Celsius, 70 or 80 degrees, and it will drop 10 degrees and then go back off. So it's not going to constantly stay on like most of the other fans on the market. Installation is super easy. I mean, they really couldn't have made it any easier. The heatsink itself does have some thermal adhesive on it, so we're going to go ahead and peel that off. I'm just going to place it right on the Raspberry Pi 4 CPU. And now we're going to take the fan and the mounting system and clip it right into the top half of the official Raspberry Pi 4 case. And it actually snaps in here quite nicely. And I guess what they have planned here is that it's going to pull in fresh air from the front here around the USB and the Ethernet and blow that air directly on the RAM and the CPU of the Raspberry Pi 4 to keep it cool. The last thing we need to do is plug in the wires. Like I mentioned, we have three wires. But uh, on the box itself, it has all of the instructions you need. I'm going to plug these in and then give you a little close up. But overall, they really couldn't have made this any easier to install. So now that we have the heat sink, the fan, and all of the wires plugged in, I'm just going to snap the top on. And now it's time to get into some testing. Okay, so I've got everything installed and I have my operating system up to date. I'm running Raspberry Pi OS. And in order to see the settings we're about to take a look at, you will need to run sudo apt update and sudo apt full upgrade from terminal. But once you're fully up to date, we can head up to the Raspberry Pi logo in the top left hand corner, preferences, Raspberry Pi configuration, and from here, we're going to go to the performance settings. And as you can see, we now have fan control. So straight out of the box, we're using GPIO pin 14, and the fan temperature is set to 80. So it's going to come on at 80, go off at 70. But for me, I like setting this to 70. I just want this fan to kind of stay ahead of the curve, so it's going to come on at 70 and go off at 60. Now it's time to get into a little bit of thermal testing. I use a simple application called Stressberry, and what this allows me to do is run a stress test. It's going to max out all four cores. It'll give me some readouts and a log in the background, and then when I'm finished with these tests, I can create an easy to read chart. The way it sits right now, we're at 1.5 gigahertz. The stock clock's on the Raspberry Pi 4. I've got the fan installed, but I've already run this without the fan inside of the official Raspberry Pi 4 case. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run. I'm going to create a chart. We can take a look at that. And then I want to overclock my Raspberry Pi 4 to 2.1 gigahertz and run the same test again to see if this fan can keep it cool enough. So after some testing, we see that the fan does work. In orange, we have no fan and blue with the fan. Remember, it's set to come on at 70 degrees Celsius. With no fan at the stock clocks of 1.5 gigahertz, we did hit a maximum of 81 degrees Celsius. So the CPU did hit its thermal throttle limit there with no fan, and I suspected it would, stressing out all four cores for this long. With the fan installed and set to come on at 70 degrees Celsius, we only hit a maximum of 76 degrees Celsius at the stock clocks. Now it's definitely working for the stock clocks on the Raspberry Pi 4, but I also went through and I tested this overclocked at 2.1 gigahertz and it's not looking that great. 
So with the fan curve, I actually set it to come on at 60 degrees Celsius and at a 2.1 gigahertz overclock, we still hit thermal throttle. I mean, it went up really quick. There's not a lot of ventilation here with the official Raspberry Pi 4 case, and this fan is kind of pulling in air around the Ethernet and USB ports, and there's just not enough room to get that air in and back out when it's overclocked. But at the stock clocks, the fan works out just fine. So in the end, I can recommend this fan here if you're using the stock clocks and the official Raspberry Pi 4 case, but if you want to do any overclocking, I would definitely recommend something a little better than this. I've tested a lot of cases on my channel, stock clocks and overclocked, and if you want a passively cooled case, I would recommend the Flirt case or the Cooler Master Pi 40 case. If you're looking for something with active cooling, I mean, I can even recommend one of the cheaper cases you get on Amazon that comes with a little 40 millimeter fan. Even those can keep the Raspberry Pi 4 CPU cool enough, even overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz, because we have more ventilation with that case. Unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi 4 case in its stock form without cutting any holes in it just doesn't offer enough ventilation to take this up to 2.1 gigahertz, even with this fan installed. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking up a Raspberry Pi or even a case for your Raspberry Pi 4, I will leave some links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.